Nah, they were all good. Alright, alright. Some of you guys might know him. His name is Hugh Jones. He's six foot something, straight out of Colorado State University. My long lost brother, Hugh Jones. <laughs> what up, Rocky? Is on? Is on? How we doing? Yeah, there we go, there we go. All right, all right, for those who don't know me, my name's Hugh, uh, my brother and I, we co-lead the sixth grade boys. Where's Kenny at, where's Kenny? Where's Kenny? Yeah, there he is. Everyone say hi to Kenny. Hi. Yep. So we co-lead the, co the sixth grade boys. This is our first year doing it, and I'm in. When I tell you I love it, I love working with you guys. The impact that you've made on our lives, superb. Oh, that's so much better, awesome. So the impact that you made on our lives, awesome guys. So we're so thankful to be here. And so the message that I'm gonna be talking about today, basically your purpose, right? Who are you in Jesus? Are you trying to pursue a purpose that's fulfilling what Jesus has for you? Are you trying to fulfill a purpose that's in the world, right? And when I mean what's in the world, I mean kind of like selfish desires. Like, so they tell you, you know, chase what makes you happy, no matter what it is, even if it's against God, right? And sometimes we have those selfish tendencies to do stuff like that. But I'm going to give you a little bit of background. So for me, I grew up in a Christian family pretty much all my life. I went to church, not every Sunday, no particular reason for that. But it was basically, I, I, had, I was in the school for, the Christian school for first through 12th grade. So, you know, I had a fair amount of Christ in my life. But I would tell you this, if someone were to look at me back then, they would say, oh, that guy's a Christian. No, I'm just kind of your average Joe when it came to that. But... When it came to my junior and senior year, I kind of had a shift in my faith. Everything just kind of flipped for me. So many things made more sense because I started leaning into God and started caring about my relationship with Him. But I had some Bible teachers in my life saying, all right, so now you are a Christian, but are you living as a Christian? And those are the questions that I started asking myself. So when it came to my junior year, I got into a relationship that was really serious. And Everyone thought, you know, we were a super strong couple. We didn't really have any arguments or anything like that. I kind of planned my future around that relationship. And if I'm going to be honest with myself, my relationship, my life flowed around that relationship. Everything that I had hoped for was in that relationship. And I put so much confidence and so much trust in that relationship, hoping that it would work out, planning my future around that person. And you can maybe figure out where this is going. But my junior and senior year was a shift because I learned that God wasn't the center of my life and that my purpose that he had for me wasn't being fulfilled because I was selfish, chasing a relationship that at the time I wasn't ready for. And at, when I was in the relationship, I thought I was ready for it. I thought I was doing a great job, you know, in high school, right? How serious can a relationship get in high school? I know, it's a little bit of a call out, but... Just be aware. If something's happened in high school, just be aware. Just a little fair warning. But when it came to that, June, between the summer, between junior and senior year, we broke up. And I honestly felt so lost because I put so much, I tried to seek so much fulfillment in that relationship. I tried to just, I built my future around that relationship. So I felt so lost. I felt so hopeless when I lost someone so important to me. So when that happened, I asked questions to God, saying, God, why is this happening to me? I thought I was on a good path. I thought I was leaning into you. And then he said, my son, this is not happening to you. It's happening for you. And that statement alone, that statement alone made me so confused and mostly so angry. Because I said, God, how could you say someone who, who's just left my life that was so important and say, this is all happening for me. So when it came to that, I was kind of angry at God. Because I felt like he took someone so important away from me. And that I was lost in my own sadness. And the way I coped with it wasn't healthy either. But I realized that God was on my side the whole time through that whole experience. Because the fulfillment that I was trying to seek was of the world. It was of the flesh. And when I mean of the flesh, I'm talking about this part that you see right now. This part. Yep. And the thing is, the reality in this world is there's going to be so many things that try to pull you away from God. 
There's going to be so many things that whenever you look at God, there's going to be things, hey, come here, try me out. I want to do this. I want to do that. I'm going to chase what makes me happy despite God telling me what's best for me. So when it came to that, I finally understood what God was saying to me when he said it was for me. He had a purpose that was for me, but I wasn't following that purpose, so I had to lose something that was precious to me to realize how precious God is. And when it came to that, man, my lens of Jesus opened up threefold. I've never seen Jesus the way I see him now, and I wouldn't be the person I am today without what happened that, between that summer and junior and senior year. And without that experience, I don't know if I would be here in this church pursuing a relationship with Jesus, helping you guys find where you're at in your faith. I don't know where I would be. But all I know is that that growth experience pushed me to be the man I am today. And in the same way, Jesus promises you, and he promises you. It doesn't, he doesn't make a suggestion saying, oh, come follow me. Everything's going to be right. I'm going to tell you, spoiler alert, everything is not going to be all right. <laughs> you're going to get, you're, some of you, I don't know if y'all are Christians or not, and that's all right. But when it comes to following Jesus, it's not just sunshine and rainbows. There's a verse in the Bible that says, the rain fall on the righteous and the foolish. No matter what, you're always going to have challenges. And you're always going to have, instead of calling them challenges, call them growth opportunities. Because the way that you're going to find fulfillment you can try to find so many ways in fulfillment in this world, right? And growing up, I was this thing what you call lukewarm. I think most of y'all know what lukewarm means, but I was neither hot, like on fire for Jesus, but I was neither cold, right? I wasn't like chasing everything that I wanted. But when it came to following Jesus, I wasn't 100%. I wasn't 100%, oh, I want Jesus and I'm in love with Jesus. It was more like, yeah, he's in my life. He's an addition to it but he wasn't the center of it. So I'm going to tell you why the things of the world seem so appealing when it comes to things that you shouldn't be putting in your body or things you shouldn't be doing to your body or maybe things you shouldn't be looking on your phone. That's the fulfillment that I'm talking about. And the reason like, why we want to feel fulfilled is because we want to feel like we made an impact, right? Maybe hopefully a positive one, but that impact that we made, like Jesus came to die on the cross. He didn't do that for no reason. He came because he had a purpose in mind. He was fulfilling prophecy. He was fulfilling, he was fulfilling a restoration story for each and every one of you. And it wasn't just a suggestion to each and every one of you that he has a great plan for you. He promises each and every one of you that he says, I have an amazing plan for you. But the question I have for you is, are you willing to surrender your plans for the amazing plans that he has promised for you? Or are you going to do the impossible challenge of trying to do life without him. It's just something to think about because the fulfillment in the world, it's like this. I'll give you an analogy, right? When you're going to get water, you don't try to go and get salt water, right? Because when you go and get regular water, it quenches your thirst, right? You're trying to quench your thirst. In the same way, when you're trying to chase your fulfillment, you want to go for the water and not the salt water. Because the salt water, on the other hand, the salt water represents the worldly desires, things that aren't going to fulfill you. And I'm going to tell you this. You're going to have a lot of friends in your life who are going to peer pressure you. You probably already experienced it. Peer pressure you that you're not into stuff that you're not really comfortable with or stuff that may seem good on the surface, but when you look deeper into it, man, that stuff just drains your soul. It's like drinking a, that water, that salt water from that cup. It's only going to dehydrate you. When you have that water, that's the fulfillment that Jesus gives you. And it's so amazing. And the things of the world, hold on one second. There's a cool thing that I wrote down. There it is. Here's the thing. When it comes to bodily desires, I'm going to tell you why it seems so appealing. It's because your flesh does not care about eternity. I'm going to say that one more time because if you're going to get anything, anything from this message, this is one of the most important things. Your flesh, this thing that you have on your body, this skin, does not care about eternity. When you leave this earth, it's not coming with you. All the cash, your house, your cars, any of that that you accumulate through life, 
It's not going with you. It's on this world, and Jesus says, flee from it and store up your treasures in heaven. Honestly, for me, that was a shift in my faith. And it pushed me to who I am today. And now when I look back on the years that I was so lukewarm and look back on the years where Jesus wasn't the center of my life, but he was in addition to it, I have so much regret. But now that I know that he is the one who offers true fulfillment, I don't want to look back and say, I want to chase my own desires. I now look forward to him and keep my eyes on him because I know the only true fulfillment is going to be through him. I know that, I, know, I don't know how that fulfillment is going to be for each and every one of you. It's not up to me. I'm not God, right? Like how you're, if you're going to be a policeman in the military, a hairdresser, missionary, I don't know how he's going to do that. It's not up to me. And sometimes it's not even up to you. Sometimes you go get a degree in college and it has nothing to do with what you're going to do 20 years later. So in the same way, surrender that your plans that you have. Because man can only get so far relying on himself. And living as a Christian, you're still going to have those challenges, right? But now you're going to have a buddy to handle them with. Now you're going to have someone that's going to help you with the hard times and tell you where to go. He's going to have someone that you can check in with. And Jesus, I read this book where it flipped my switch between seeing Jesus as this holy creator who's just so divine and has so much power. That's how I used to see him. And I still see him that way. And I respect the Lord for who he is. But now I see him for more than that. I see him as someone who I can legitimately have a conversation with. I don't think a year ago, I would go to my room and say, I'm going to open my Bible and read Matthew. (laughs) That didn't sound appealing to me. I wanted to go play 2K. I wanted to go play FIFA. And man, now it's like, I want to spend time with Jesus. And all it takes is one decision to change your whole life. And it's not going to be, oh, I made the decision. I already feel the transformation. You know, I'm not saying that's impossible. It's unlikely, though. Jesus is going to transform him however however much you let him. However much you want Jesus to be in your life is up to you. He's reaching out his hand, but are you going to reach back? He's asking for your plans. He's saying, all right, Lord, here are my plans. I want what you have for me, what you have in, in stock for me. Are you willing to do that? Because I know the things of the world, they're going to try to stray you away. Every single time. Before we end this, I got this verse. And I, I didn't have this originally planned out. But I saw this verse and I was like, man, I have to. I have to have this in the presentation. It is too good. <clears throat> so we got Psalm 1611. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Now when I say surrender your plans, I'm not saying Jesus doesn't care at all about what you, what you legitimately care about. There's a reason why each and every one of you has gifts and talents, right? And that wasn't just for waste, right? Jesus gave you that to use. Jesus gave that to you so, because each and every one of us has it, whether we found it or not. But he cares about what you're passionate about. When I say surrender your plans, God is either going to slightly change it or he's going to change it a lot because the path that he has for you is so good. And his promises aren't just like, yeah, maybe I'll do it. No. This is the Lord. This is Jesus who we're talking about. Jesus who lived a perfect life, who in the Old Testament was prophesied to free us from our sins. And we have someone to rely on now. Someone to go through life with. All right, so if you're going to take anything away from this, just know that Jesus, he's there even when you don't need him. He's not asking you to come to him with just your problems. You don't go to your best friend and just say, hey, here's all my problems. Thanks for listening. No. Jesus is there to talk about your math homework. Jesus is there to talk to you before your basketball game. Jesus is there to talk to you before you go hang out with your friends. He's not just there to listen to your problems. As much as he wants to hear that, 
It's a, imagine going to your best friend. That's, that just becomes exhausting, right? Obviously, it's not exhausting for the Lord, but he wants a sincere relationship with you. So to find that true fulfillment that we find in Jesus, I'm going to tell you, every single time you do that, you will not feel empty like I did when I was chasing the stuff in the world in my relationship. All right, let me pray over you all, and then we'll do some questions. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much that I got this opportunity to talk to these kids today. Thank you so much that the, for the impact they're making on each other's lives and on the leaders' lives. I pray that we're making an impact on their life and just that we can show them uh, your mercy and your grace and how good you are. And I just pray that they can open up their hearts to the amazing plans that you have for them, the amazing fulfillment that you have for them, and that they know that they're loved every single day, and I just pray that they can be a light for others around them, whether it's at school, outside of school, wherever they are, that they can just be a light for you. In your name we pray, amen.